What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to another version, another episode of the Warboss Chop Shop. I am here with some uh, bits and pieces from a couple different kits that we are going to build up today as a word bearer. Now, uh, word bearer Chaos Space Marine Legions, or the Legion of word bearers, for those of you who don't know, is a legion of traitor space marines that really got into the whole uh, ritual and um, this very evil worshipping the chaos gods kind of thing. They were uh, among the most fanatically religious, oops, fanatically religious of the original space marine le legions and um, they, they had faith and belief in the emperor and uh, when he said, hey, don't do that, we don't, I don't like religion, then um, they turned to the chaos gods when he embarrassed them and their Primarch, Lorgar. That's a little bit of the background and the history. So, um, uh, practically, thinking practically now, the way we're gonna build our Legionary is by incorporating a lot of different scrolls, books, um, items of, of worship and fanaticism, because that's kind of what they were known as. And also, word bearers are known as uh, having lots of mutations, because the Chaos Gods show their favor by mutating their legionnaires. So this is what we're gonna do. I've already clipped out and glued on because um, there's no reason to show this part in the chop shop, the legs and the base. So I'm gonna be using liquid cement for plastic models by Model Master. I glued the legs to the base there. I also glued a torso together. This is off the regular Chaos Space Marine sprue and the backpack. Um, if you want to get fancy, you can use the Raptors or Warp Talons ones, um, but we're going to use those for now. So, but I'm not going to glue it together yet. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide, do I want my Legionary to be carrying his bolter, uh, wielding it one-handed, or um, do I want him to be using a close combat weapon? So the squad that I'm making are I'm, I'm giving them all close combat weapons so I could decide to use him with the chain sword and uh, I think that I might actually do that so instead of having his bolter slung across his chest I think that's a really boring pose um, just because it, it kind of cuts off the the uh, ability to paint inside the uh, the torso and I think that's one of the most interesting parts of the models <laughs> So what I've got here is the Warp Talon sprue, and I'm going to be clipping out one of the chain sword arms because the Warp Talons and Chaos, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Raptors kit. Their um, chain swords are among the most detailed and awesome looking, and just really brutal looking of of all the chain swords. So this is the one we're going to go with. It's got a fantastic double double-edged kind of zoom in kind of look to it and lots of points pokey 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 and it is fantastic so I, I did notice that the scale is a little bit bigger and chunkier than a regular chaos space marine so the arm is gonna look pretty big but that's okay because he's, he's like a model in, in power armor so it's that's fine it's the right arm I think is interesting because in the chaos space marine sprue chain swords are all left-handed so that, that means that when we're gluing our guy together, we're gonna have to figure out a way to have him armored uh, with the right arm holding the chainsword like this and the left arm holding his weapon. Okay, so we've, got, we've also got his shoulder pads. So the first item right out the gate is the Chain sword from the Warp Talons kit. Beautiful, beautiful model or piece for our model. I'm gluing on a shoulder pad now from the regular Chaos Space Marine kit. Okay, so now the conundrum is you can't have two chain swords, although that would look super epic and awesome. So, what we're going to do is take that chain sword arm for the left hand, we're going to snip. Do a little bit of surgery. So we're gonna snip off the blade. You can keep those in your bits box. Keep everything, or just about everything. 
So now I've got a chain sword left hand minus the chain sword. So I'm going to take my bolter here because I've decided that, yep, he's going to join the rest of his squad. They're armed with bolters and close combat weapons. Maybe they'll have veterans of the long war and I'll make them kind of like an assaulty army. So um, maybe when I want to build up the rest of the squad, I'll arm them with Meltas or Flamers. Flamers are cheaper to buy. Meltas are still, um, I mean, price-wise, because Meltas are still a good, a good option. So you're going to see them on sale on eBay. Bit sellers are going to be selling um, Meltas for a little bit more. I just took my hobby knife and drilled the hole into the bolter there. You want to be careful if you're not using a pin vise to just insert the hole and work it in very easily. You don't want to warp the bolter barrel. Now what we're going to do is glue it into his hand. Bada bing, bada boom. And there, where once he was holding a chain sword, now he's one-handing a bolter in his left hand. So I'm thinking about the word bearers now, knowing that they, they, you know what, they were always one of my least favorite legions. I never really cared for them. I thought that they were just, um, just as bland as the Black Legion, which I thought was pretty bland. And but now reading the Horus Heresy novels, I'm, I'm really turning around on them. The 40k novels, I don't think really do them do them justice. Um, every every iteration that I've seen of them in the 40k novels is just like. Oh hell, chaos! Chaos is awesome, and and um, everything else sucks. And chaos is chaos is the bomb, and they just seem like a bunch of fanboys to me. And I don't really get why, you know, why they are the way they are. And they're also they're also like really self-serving, arrogant, and um, just selfish, and they're all like big jerks. And I don't like. Uh, it's hard to sympathize with them. It's hard for me to find them tragically endearing. And with with bad guys, that's kind of what you want, right? All right, shoulder pad, boom. The great thing about Model Master's plastic cement is that it goes on pretty, uh, it, it starts working pretty quickly. So um, while I've been talking there, I've been able to glue on the arm, the bolter and the shoulder pad. Now that we can see what our upper body is looking like, this is when we're gonna glue it onto the torso or the legs. We're gonna glue the torso onto the legs. And some severe shadows I got. Sorry y'all, I'm using a different kind of setup for my lights. I'm trying to see if I like it or not. Can't say that I really do. All right, we're getting into the good part of the kit bash now when we add some accoutrements. It's gonna make this guy really stand out as a word bearer. So you try to find some, where when you think about looking for for really good chaosy bits or things that will show that these guys are are worshiping the chaos gods and stuff, then um, and you really want to decorate, make them look like veterans or like they've been around for a while. I'm going with the backpack top that you find on the chaos sprue. I'm also going to go with some bits and pieces from the um, from the gosh, what are they called? Flagellant's kit. Um, but you can also, the Warp Talon's helmets, they look very, the reason I kind of stuttered there for a second is because the Warp Talon helmets, look at that, that's fantastic, look at that. Um, it's got little horns, it looks like it's growing out of the helmet um, much better than the horns that are in the, the horned heads that are on the, the Chaos Space Marine sprue. I mean, you could use these, they look like, but they look like almost like de decorative rather than like their, the helmet itself is mutating. And that's what I really like about these ones. It looks like they're Mark IV helmets and the horns are just starting to like grow out of them. So uh, we're gonna be using those. I haven't used those for all of them. I only had so many Warp Talon helmets, um, but I, I love the way they look. So we're gonna put that in there like that, like he's swinging down. Now let's add some stuff. So. I've got here a book with a bone on it from the Flagellant kit. I've also got a book on a plank from the Flagellant kit, um, a skull on a chain from the Chaos Space Marine kit. We don't need these stuff. 
so let's put away the other things we don't need. We've got a scroll with a skull from the flagellant kit. Oh, we don't need this left hand. And we've got a scroll with two little um, rivets in it. So we're going to think about how can we use these. Well, looking at the parchment, we can use that as a loincloth right there. That would be fine. So um, I think we'll do that. We'll, we'll make it like a little piece of page of scripture or something. We'll put it right across his uh, torso, right by his cod piece. They're not called cod pieces, Warboss Tay. Oh, sorry. I don't. Mm. I don't know what you call it. This part of the armor right there. Boom! Awesome. Alrighty, page of scripture covering his naughty bits and. What else do we want to do? We could take the skull on the chain and we can add that to the backpack. You can add it to his uh, his sleeve. You could add it to the, the bottom of the bolter here. But I think we're going to add it to the end of his chain sword. Hey gang, I decided instead of putting the chain with the skull on the chain sword here, instead I decided to put it on the bottom of the bolter, kind of to um, make a little bit more of a line of movement from the top of the sword all the way down to like here. So yeah, I, I decided to, to do that instead, so um, I'm gonna get my model cement right here. I'm almost out. Ugh. I have to go on like a supply run. You guys ever find when you're um, like when you sit down to paint you realize you're missing stuff and you gotta go and put it like you put it on a list and then the next time you're at the model store the hobby store you uh, realize that you don't remember what it was that you're missing. I hate when that happens. Like I, I, I run out of paints or the paints dry up that I have and I am I think, oh yeah, I gotta remember the next time I go in, I need more XV88 or I need more Zandri dust or whatever it is. And uh, I can never remember. Anyways, little tangent there. So the great thing about plastic cement glue, for those of you who don't know, is that it it creates a chemical bond between the two pieces of cement, which which is what makes it better than, than super glue, I think. It, it melts the plastic down. Bear with me if you've already heard me talk about this before, or if you are a veteran hobbyist in the know. It creates a little bond by uh, melting the plastic pieces and then re-drying them together so that when it dries the it's like the plastics were were molded together I like that okay so while we're letting the dry I'm going to take our book here with the bone attachment to it and what I'm gonna do is I am going to um, attach it to his waist so Right here, there's a good spot for it because it's nice and open. His chain sword is raised, and so that means that um, we'll be able to see the book. If he had a bolter slung across his chest, we might not be able to see it as much. So, wow, this guy's going to be loaded down with books and scrolls and all sorts of stuff. But that's kind of like what we want as a word bearer. So I've been thinking about where to put this scroll also, with the, the skull on it, and where also we could put, uh, focus you, where also we could put the book on the board. And I'm looking at my model and I think this might be enough to go with. So what I could do is find another model, say um, my sergeant here from my word bearer squad, and decide that I want to put the book here on the back of his backpack. Um, that way it evens everything out. 
gives you something interesting to look at, and um, so that might be something that I do. Um, if you decide to do that, sorry, I'm saying um a lot, you just want to make sure that the surface is flush, so you could take your clippers and just clip the edge of the exhaust port there, and Uh, that's the, the tricky thing when you're when you're making something, trying to make it flush against another material or another surface. You just got to make sure that um, you're okay with scraping down and rebonding that surface. So we'll hang it like that, like he's got his backpack, and uh, the the book of Lorgar is hanging from it. I think that's nice, and. We still want to make use of this scroll with the with the attachment on it then we'll just find another guy maybe this flamer guy and we'll put the scroll right on his belt somewhere okay so um i'm basically taking all the pieces that i thought would be useful and i'm finding different models to put it on so this is like a <laughs> like a group chop shop kit batch rather than just a single model the great thing about word bearers, I guess, if you want to look at it in a positive light, is that the word, the word bearers are so fanatical and devout. They have all these, you know, accoutrements that you can really go to town with. And there are models in both the 40k and fantasy range that have lots of um, scroll work, books, parchment pieces that you can use from. So for this model that I built here, I basically just used Chaos Space Marine as a, as a base. Uh, I used Chaos Warp Talons, uh, Raptors, some bits and pieces from that, the helmet and the arm, and just a lot of bits and pieces from the Flagellant Kit. And there you go, Warboss Chop Shop. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next video. Latest players!